All right, let's not overcomplicate this. All we're trying to do is build an active track rig. Basically, we're gonna use this camera here and you'll see why in a second. And we are going to build a camera that can follow you around and still run into your switcher and be a professional camera. You can control everything from a distance. We'll need your cell phone probably for something like this, but we are going to unpack DJI RS2. Uh, this one is the pack, including the Raven Eye. That's the most important thing. You need the Raven Eye for the active track to work. Then we have this expansion kit just so it's easy to mount to things. Uh, honestly, you don't even need this somewhere. Focus motor is important. We're gonna use that on the zoom. That's how we're gonna get a zoom on our camera. Let's go ahead and build the active track rig, Blackmagic uh, Micro Studio Camera. The reason we're using this guy is because it has SDI and HDMI outs, okay? It's also really tiny. There's no reason to put a screen on a rig that already has a screen and tracks you because there's no cameraman, so why even have a screen? If you can get your hands on this camera, this is the camera I'm recommending for this. You'll see why it makes the wiring a lot easier. And then the DJI RS2, you could probably get a DJI RS3 because they're out now, but the RS2 is what I'm used to and will work. This is the battery, it's also the handle. It can mount to a tripod. This rig can be completely battery powered, but obviously we're using it for a switcher in a studio setting. So we're going to make sure we power everything and plug it all in. Raven Eye, this guy, the Raven Eye. This is the most important part of the whole rig. This is the little computer where basically an HDMI feed comes in, it does the tracking and then tells the Ronin, tells the rig like where to point. So that's what this Raven Eye is. That's why you need it. In the time that I was building a bunch of rigs for people, these were a very hot commodity. I really wish I didn't have to use extendable cable, but I need to power the thing and I don't have a dummy battery. I could just very well use a dummy battery right here. This guy, super small form factor, which means the runner doesn't have to work very hard. And it means we can fit everything in because hopefully there's enough room between here and here to put the accessory cable. The focus motor. Now the focus motor is just called a focus motor. We're actually not gonna put it on the focus of the lens so every lens here right you have a zoom which moves the whole lens then you have the focus we're not actually going to put it on the focus because we can control the focus from the camera itself we're going to put it on the zoom this is not a uh, powered lens if it was we could just control it through the ATEM software we wouldn't even have to deal with the focus motor but the Ronin rig does let us get around this use a slightly cheaper lens I mean this is 800 plus dollar lens but uh, it's not a powered one. Building the rig out here. Now that we got that, let's get our camera. Then we will throw our lens on it. It's starting to look like a camera rig. Let's get our focus motor. You want these edges on the outside. You wanna put it nice and tight around. Cut off the excess. Is you basically need to pull the camera into the focus motor so that way when it pushes against it, it doesn't move. Now we're tight. So uh, basically as this motor moves the camera should not get pushed away from it because the strap is pulling it in we just made the zoom part of our ptz which is a pan tilt zoom we just made the zoom part it's that easy we have a little bit of wiring to do but the ronin makes it all very easy for us now that we got the zoom part done let's handle the pan and the tilt all of a sudden we're starting to look like a real rig slide this guy on so now we need to balance it this ronin rig is very strong so it's not even a problem if you're leaning a little bit you don't have to be super accurate this is like a preliminary adjustment but that's pretty good raven eye here we go that's where i like for it to live and i usually just pull these little wings out the raven eye is currently the best tracking camera that i have used so that's why i continue to use it very easily from a cell phone i might get a dummy battery later which means then i can lose this giant accessory cable that's going to be on here so now we have power for the camera, so now it'll stay on forever. That's good. So you're going to need an HDMI that goes into the Raven Eye. The Raven Eye takes a mini HDMI. The reason we are using this one is because it has an HDMI and an SDI out. Could you use a studio camera? Absolutely, yes. Uh, however, it is big and it is hard to plug everything in uh, on this rig. And we're gonna plug the USB-C this one at the bottom says RSS, bunch of USBs. RSS, plug that in, there we go. That's a good first step. I'm gonna plug into the bottom one here. 
Okay, so we got two USBs, so our Raven Eye should be fully hooked up now. All right, so I got this one plugged in the middle, and we're gonna go under the camera to our focus motor. Let's plug in the SDIs for this camera here. So you have switchers that are SDI. SDI can go a long distance in HDMI. Uh, and the reason we're doing two SDIs is because that is how you do camera control with Blackmagic products. Now, I could do camera control via the Visca ports on this guy and things like that. The thing is, we need special cables for this camera. Because it's a micro studio camera, it needs micro SDI. So we do have two ports right here on the side. And that's what we're going to use these micro SDIs on. We have a lot of extra cables around here. When you run out of Velcro, you use zip ties or tape or something take the, the cables all sticky, so I'm gonna use zip ties, but I highly recommend using Velcro instead. Can this be completely wireless? Yes. However, the second you make it wireless, unless you're able to get the 16 channels of audio wirelessly through SDI back to this thing, you're gonna lose your camera control. That's pretty much all you lose. Not with this, but with a pocket cinema, you can use the middle things controller. You make a little cable harness here. And yes, I have absolutely brought this thing on gigs and it has worked great. Because I have one man in an entire show, multiple shows, plenty of shows, uh, and this was my cameraman, and it worked great. I just have my phone that I can do active track with. I do it from a distance. It's less cables for me to run network and things like that. I'd rather run the cables, but it's a perk. I take the risk. It works out. We have a rig. It is not the prettiest thing at all. All right, I got a blinking light. That's good, it means it's charging. You should be able to turn it on. Activation complete. Calibrate, so it's gonna calibrate the motors there. Now this thing can move up and down. We have signal, that works well. Now we can set the focus motor. All right, so let's go ahead and calibrate that guy. Focus motor. Focus motor calibrate, start calibration. It's moving. It's finding its endpoints, and that's it. Dial functions, focus motor. Look at that. We got our zoom. The Ronin is going to take care of the zoom as well as the pan and tilt. Um, and then it's also gonna take care of active tracking and moving, right? The ATEM, the software, the controller, it's going to take care of the color and the focus, okay? We're gonna be able to set the focus and keep it locked, which is what we want in a studio setting. We don't want things on autofocus because then things move around. Um, even something like this, we're gonna to wanna to stay locked in terms of focus. Okay, cool. Let's get the Raven Eye set up. We got one little dot, which just means it's battery's dead, right? It's just, it's charging. So I'm gonna turn this on, go blue. There's a little QR code on the back here, which I'm going to scan for the Wi-Fi. It'll also tell you the Wi-Fi right there. So I'm gonna go into my settings, Wi-Fi pops up. There it is, Raven Eye. We'll go ahead and click that. I hooked up here. Uh, I am getting it a feed into my phone as well, okay? And what's really cool about this is I can pull up the, I can do a lot of cool things with this. So I can enable Force Mobile, which essentially allows me to use my phone. Uh, normally this is connect to a tripod, but I can basically track the person with my phone, right? So as I turn my phone, I can turn the camera, which is nice, okay? So that's a cool feature. I do enable and I do use the joystick all the time. The joystick kind of works like a video game, okay? So you have it here and you can move the camera around. Again, no wires, no nothing, right? So uh, the phone is always wireless, but I actually don't have problems with the Wi-Fi on the Raven Eye. Um, even at kind of longer distances, it's Usually fine. We can try out active track, so I can spin the camera around. Let's just spin around a bunch. We have me on camera. Circle my face, it's now tracking me. I'll put the phone down, and wherever I go, the camera should continue to point at me and track me, right? Even if I walk over here, we should be good to go. So, Welcome to Active Track. It is that easy. Okay, so we have our Ronin rig now fully rigged out. The Raven Eye is up and running. We have a stream going to our phone from the Raven Eye. We have the SDI output feed 
going to our monitor here. We can hook up the SDI input feed to the camera and we can hook this up to a video switcher, whether it's the ATEM Mini Extreme with a bi-directional converter, whether it's uh, an ATEM switcher that has the SDI in and out ports on it and get camera control, which would control our focus, our color, and anything else about the camera that we need. And we have our zoom, so I can fully take control from here and I can even zoom the camera in and out and we can see the zoom working there and now it'll track me. So wherever I go, the camera will follow and it'll stay on me no matter where I go. Even if I get lower out of the frame, it's still gonna come down and up and just follow me around. So total price on this guy. With everything in, I think you're talking about three grand. Then you need an ATEM switcher and things like that on top of it. So for an extreme with bi-directional converters, looking at four, you got a monitor and things like that. So you're looking at like $4,000 really. For this rig here, three grand, probably less than three grand. You got a lens, camera, and you have the Ronin. All together, you're looking at around $3,000. For all that that could be plus or minus depending on what you're getting what accessories you're getting etc but yeah not bad a camera that can track you is really high quality can do 4k or 1080p you can kind of customize and it's a studio camera so it technically can always stay on this ronin rig i've left this on for days maybe even weeks at a time and it's been fine you do have to balance the camera at the start. If you don't, the motor will get all wonky. You might have to go recalibrate it, things like that. Definitely balance it. Very, very happy with how it's turning out. Just gotta get the focus control through the SDI. It looks pretty impressive too. I guess that counts for something. Hope you guys like that. Quick and easy way to set up your micro Blackmagic studio camera on the Ronin rig. Get your active tracking so you don't need a cameraman with you in the studio. Hope that was helpful. And uh, if you guys want to see and hear more about things like this and other video production things that we're doing, go ahead and check out our website in the description. Thanks for watching.